All right, so we're gonna talk active shooter response bags. Now, this video's kinda gonna um, piggyback off of my duty belt setup video. And uh, just, I'm not gonna pull my belt up, but just to recap. So, when I'm on duty, I'm in uniform, there's a couple things that I have on me all the time when I'm on duty. First uh, is a bulletproof vest. Obviously, gonna wear a bulletproof vest. If you're in law enforcement and you know you work patrol or whatever, you don't wear a vest. Uh, it, by this point, that's on you. Next, obviously, I've got my pistol. It's a Glock 21. It's got a weapon light on it. I carry two extra magazines for the Glock 21 on my belt. I keep a tourniquet on my belt. I keep a flashlight, a good flashlight, on my belt. Got a taser, some handcuffs, and a multi-tool, as well as my radio. All that stuff on my belt. In my pockets, I have a pocket knife, another flashlight, usually some nitrile gloves, and maybe like a cell phone. I also tend to wear a paracord bracelet. So that's all the stuff that I tend to keep on me, just sort of a real quick breakdown. That's day-to-day, -day, coming and going when I'm on duty. Now, my theory on active shooter loadouts, just in general, is that your active shooter loadout should augment what you're already carrying, and should support some sort of long gun. I'm not looking to replace anything that I'm carrying. For instance, day to day, as I go about my work, I have three flashlights on my person. What do I need a fourth flashlight for? See what I mean? So I'm not looking to replace anything. I've got good gear, I maintain my gear, it should serve me just fine in a crisis, it has so far. Again, I'm looking to augment my gear and support some, some sort of long gun. Hopefully you're in the same boat. If you're not, substitute rifle magazines slash shotgun shells for more pistol mags, all right? Fair enough, moving on. Now, when we're talking about active shooter, one of the things that we really have to consider is time. These things happen very, very quickly. And fortunately, as law enforcement, we're getting better at responding to them. We're getting in there, we're getting the job done, doing whatever we need to do, we're getting better at it. But these things are still fast. And so, you know, uh, things like plate carriers and chest rigs and stuff like that, those things are fine, but they take time to put on. I've read stuff where guys thought they were gonna put a plate carrier on while they were driving and stuff like that. All right, just remember, you're not gonna do any good if you can't get there. If you're burning down the road at 80 miles an hour trying to get to an active shooter and you go to put your plate carrier on and you run into a tree, you didn't do anybody any good, all right? And that's probably like best case scenario. You know, put your plate carrier on as you're pulling up to a school and you run over a bunch of kids who are evacing. That'd be awesome, right? So take those things into consideration. I like this style of bag. This is a you know over the shoulder sling style bag and this particular bag is made by US Peacekeeper and I think it's just billed as their active shooter bag. Now it is sort of designed to carry AR-15 style magazines. I suppose they would work with just probably about any um, 5.56 rifle. You could grab, you know, you could jab, jam pistol mags in there, whatever. I'll even show you an idea for some shotgun shells. But if you're gonna be going bigger than 5.56, I don't know, maybe you could get one AK mag in there. I don't know of departments that carry AK mags, I'm just throwing it out there. Uh, so, some things to think about with that. Now, like I say, this is an over the style shoulder bag. It's pretty fast. Um, it's set up to carry four AR-15 magazines. It's got a probably what would really be a double pistol magazine pouch on the front and then a radio pouch on the back. Now again, I don't, uh, I don't need this. You know, I really don't need to use these pouches as it's built. I have a radio on, you know, on my belt, and I've already got three pistol magazines. Do I really need a fourth pistol magazine? I do not, but I have access to a long gun. If you do not have access to a long gun, the answer is probably yes, and you probably need more than four. So anyways, moving right along. So sort of set up in the front here, our school district is starting to go to a uh, key card entry system. Law enforcement was provided with key cards. This is my key card. I just keep it on the bag. It just stays down in that pouch. I use a little bit of bungee cord material 
to, to attach it to the pouch. That way I can kind of run it off, do the key card thing, stick it back in there, and I'm good to go. I run three rifle magazines. I run two in the back pouch, one in the front pouch. So the front pouch is kind of a speed reload. All I have to do is get the, you know, get the flap open. I don't have to fumble with two magazines. I just have one right there, two in the back pocket, pouch, whatever. These pouches are uh, just Velcro closure. They do kind of have a little tab in there if you wanted to tuck your the pouch lid down in there, you could do that. So they do have that. They have an elastic keeper here that's whatever. It, it is what it is. Uh, and then on the back is again that radio pouch. It's got an elastic keeper back there. And in the pouch back there, I keep my door stops, which I'll show you here in a second. It has two zipper pouches. This first one I've identified with just some bright colored 550 cord. It's pink. Uh, they didn't have red, so whatever. It's pink. It identifies this pouch for me as being my aid pouch. And when we unzip it, what we see down in there is you've got some sort of elastic dividers here against this back wall and then sort of like a mesh pouch there on the front. And, and, I'm, and I'm sorry, just to be, so that I'm very clear, in this front pouch is where I keep my trauma kit and in this back pouch is where I keep, you know, sort of my extra accessory type stuff. And this is basically a wide open pouch. It does have a hook field um, for attaching hook Velcro back stuff. And I, I do have some, this is where I keep my chem lights and I just have some chem light holders in there just to, so that they're not like falling down in the bag and stuff like that. A couple little places for, if you wanted to attach a molly pouch or something like that and then kind of also, I don't know, it's like a little pass through thing. Maybe you could run like an Alice clip thing on there. I don't know. Uh, if, I, if I'm carrying a breaching tool or something, usually what I'll do is I'll slide the breaching tool down in there. That way it's nice and out of the way. And, and that seems to work pretty well for me. On the back, it's uh, ventilated, meshy stuff. And then probably, I'm assuming that's to run a stabilizing strap. So there's that. This bag also came with a universal holster for attaching to that hook field there in the back. I don't need it. Uh, it also came with the with a strap to go over the radio pouch. Again, I don't need it. So I took that stuff off. It's just extra weight and I just leave it out. Let's see. Yep, so that's the highlight of the bag. This is issued by my department. Like I said, it's made by US Peacekeeper and it's all right. You know, it's okay uh, for these bags. Generally speaking, um, I know I'm calling it an active shooter bag. Usually if I'm getting my patrol rifle out, I'm gonna go ahead and grab this bag and just take it with me. If it's getting to the point where I think I need a rifle, I probably ought to just have the whole bag. So that'll usually come out, um, you know, be it, you know, whatever kind of critical incident, if I think I need my rifle, I can grab this. Also, you know, if I was on like a bad car accident or something like that where I might need my trauma gear, I'll just go ahead and take this bag as well without the rifle. So the bag does a lot of things. I'm calling it an active shooter bag. It really could fill fill a lot of roles. Just just keep that in mind. So let's get that out of the way. All right. So this is the contents of the bag. Like I said, um, oh, that was in there. Uh, that was in the pistol magazine pouch. It's usually not in there. That usually just stays in my car. Uh, I was doing a presentation for some Citizen Academy type stuff. Anyways, moving right along. So three 30 round rifle magazines, two P mags, and then one just uh, GI magazine. Those work just fine. Next, talked about door stops. So, as I mentioned in my home defense video, door stops can be used to keep doors open, which is very important. You know, if you're uh, evacuating casualties and stuff like that, and, you know, magnetic door locks and stuff like that may not be working because when maybe a school went into lockdown or something like that, doors aren't going to be staying open. Whatever, you know banks, whatever, they all kind of have those same systems. So your doors might not be staying open. Throw a couple, you know, I keep a couple of door stops, a lot of business entrance, entrances, school entrances are double doored, so I might need to keep two doors open. Also, I can use these to keep doors closed if I need to. Maybe I find myself in a situation where uh, I need to help people barricade in a room. I can use the door stops for that as well. It will help. Again, it's not the end all be all, but it'll help. And again, those are right on that external radio pouch. My trauma kit. 
So this is the basic guts of the trauma kit. I'm not gonna take it all out, you guys know what this stuff looks like. So chest seals, quick clot, a control wrap, some athletic tape, and an Oli's bandage, six inch variety. So, uh, you know, between the plastic bag and the tape and all the other plastic and stuff, I can remanufacture additional chest seals, you know, whatever the case may be. I like having, keeping my stuff in a pouch, inside a pouch, for two reasons. One, it kind of keeps things waterproof, which, you know, maybe I need it, maybe I don't. But if I enter into a crisis site, I've got people that are maybe capable of providing self-aid or something like that but i need to go move on to do more work i can pull this out leave this with wounded people and i can continue to move and still have my ammunition and stuff like that i don't have to try to fumble around with getting stuff out of there okay just a couple pairs of nitrile gloves and then also in that trauma pocket a pocket whatever uh are some medical shears a sharpie for writing on it's mainly for writing on patients but I could also use it for marking if I if I needed to but it's primarily there for for writing on people and then this is just a pocket CPR mask in the back pocket that I talked about where the chem lights were at uh, I carry a total of four two green two red for signaling however you know I see fit incident commanders calling stuff out whatever the case about 10 feet of rope now I can use this to rig up drag lines for people to help evac casualties barricaded door shut maybe i don't know lower i don't know lower stuff out of a window i'm not gonna say people i started to say it but not, i don't know probably not re realistically but uh you know whatever so a little, little hanker rope there assorted batteries you know uh weapon lights optics stuff like that you know um things go dead so i keep extra batteries and this is just a fluorescent orange marker panel. And I can use this any number of different ways. Leave it out in a hallway to identify a casualty collection point, put it up in a window so that people outside of a crisis site can see where a casualty collection point is. You name it, I can do it with, you know, a marker panel if I need to signal somehow. All right, so going back to the bag. Now I talked about this being set up for AR magazines, and that's true, they hold AR magazines reasonably well. But what it also does, is it can hold some shotgun shells. So this is just a five round elastic shot shell keeper. And uh, it's Velcro backed. And so what you can do with these, get you, I don't know, four of them, load them up with shotgun shells, and then what you can do is just stick them down in there. If you're running a shotgun, and now, your shotgun shells are nice and secured. You can probably keep 10 shells per pouch. If you need more shotgun shells, you just pull one of your uh, elastic shell keepers out, you're ready to go. So that's the solution for shotgun shells. You know, um, maybe on your squad, if you're fortunate like I am, on our department we have rifles and shotguns. So uh, some guys carry less lethal shotguns, some guys carry, uh, you know, lethal shotguns, and so, if you're, maybe you're on a squad where you have a number of lethal shotguns as well as patrol rifles, maybe one of your guys who's kind of a shotgun dude is like, hey, you know what, you guys carry rifles, I'll carry a shotgun, that way we've got some kind of depth in our response. That'd be cool, something to think about with that. I also kind of mentioned breaching tools. I, I don't have any out here, I didn't pull them out of my car. I, keep, I do keep a couple different types of breaching equipment in my car. You know, just kind of depending on where I'm going into. Maybe I'll pick one over another, you know, whatever. Uh, like I said, get with your squad. You don't necessarily have to be the end-all be-all. You don't have to be the end-all be-all. Get with your squad. Maybe one guy goes out and buys a small sledge. Another guy goes out and buys a reasonable, you know, a, a good a good quality crowbar. And maybe another guy goes and buys like a tactical tomahawk or something. There you've got three guys maybe on your squad or shift or whatever. You've got equipment spread loaded. One guy's not footing the bill for it. You've got that stuff spread out. Maybe your department provides it to you, but they probably don't. So uh, if you're you know in that situation, split it up with your guys. You know it, It's worth the 10 bucks if you ever have to use it. So, so there's that. Um, 
that kind of covers my my active shooter bags, my thoughts on it. A couple little closing remarks. Things like uh, food, water, snivel gear, stuff like that. Leave those things out of your bag. They don't belong there. Our priority is to go in and save lives. Food, water, and snivel gear ain't going to do that. All right? That stuff's just going to make your kit more bulky, and it's more weight that you're going to have to lug around. You should be staying hydrated when you're on duty. You should really be trying to stay, you know, reasonably well fed when you're on duty. I'm not saying that, you know, you're fat and bloated all the time, but keep your energy levels up when you're on duty. And when a crisis like this kicks off, you'll be okay for 12 hours. Trust me. Um, like I said, you don't want to be carrying around that extra weight. So, uh, there's my thoughts on that. And, and this is not like the end all be all list. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm just talking my take on it. I won't even say my experience, my take on it. All right. Quote of the day. Let's do the quote of the day since we're all done here. All right. We must remember that one man is much the same as another and that he is best who is trained in the severest school. And that's from the history of the Peloponnesian War. And I'm not even going to try to pronounce that group name. So there it is. Hey, I appreciate you guys taking the time to tune in and watch. If you like it, um, subscribe, share, like, all that good stuff. If you have questions, comments, concerns, whatever the case, go ahead and throw those down there at the bottom. Um, I'll just go ahead and throw out there that there's probably some things that I did not mention about this bag that I keep in this bag that I'm not going to throw out there. If you have questions as far as like active shooter response and stuff like that, go get you some training and um, they'll probably talk about things that I didn't talk about in reference to the bag. Um, you know, this is an open forum, so I'm not going to throw that stuff out there. Anyways, there it is. Uh, like I say, if you have questions, comments, or concerns, go ahead and throw them up at the bottom. I appreciate you guys taking the time to tune in and watch. Thanks.